Well, it's great to see you again. Mary's told me that you've been working on Incantation by Paul Might and Gillian Erskine from one of our top music sheets, which is cool. Love to hear a bit of that. Yep. Did you also mm -hmm. want to play uh, any of the James Michael Stevens piece that you were working on last time? Or have you mainly um, worked on the new one? I think we've we moved on for that. I did okay. work on a pedaling and I've sort of transitioned that into this song. But mm -hmm. yeah, just, just this song for now. Cool. All right. And then um, as always, uh, maybe doing some improv with it and hearing what, what mm. you've been doing. Have you been doing yeah, some sure. improvising based on it? Um, I haven't really, but I have sort of added some sort of like, I don't know, sped things up a bit, made it louder here and there if I just felt like it. Just okay, like, yeah. cool. Maybe we can pull it apart even a bit more if you wanted to do that. Yeah, sure. All right. All right. Well, why, don't, so why don't we hear it um, as is? to start with. job really good uh, very nicely played isn't it funny how the only place you came unstuck was after the hardest bit where i thought you might come unstuck when you're doing this and you got through all of that beautifully and then the easy bit is it, it happens to all of us Finn, don't worry um very nicely played it's a little bit quirky this piece isn't it it reminds me a bit of the harry potter um that What's that called? Uh, do you know the one I mean? Da, na, na, na. It's all that bell sound. It's all like... I'm not really coaching Harry, po Harry Potter, but yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, the, the, yeah, the, the Wizards or Hogwarts theme or whatever it is. It's all a little bit like quirky and kind of you have these unexpected flats and sharps. And Gillian and Paul have done that in this one, um, which which is perhaps one of the reasons you like it. I mean, it's, it's quite unusual. You, you, you're, at the top of the second page, you're going... And you expect it to do more of the same thing, and then it does this. What? How crazy is that? I mean, it almost feels like it's a mistake, and then it comes back. And I think that's one of the fun parts of this yeah. piece. Is that something that you enjoyed about it? Yeah, well, it was actually quite interesting because when I first, when Mary first introduced it to me, maybe like four weeks ago, five weeks, she didn't actually tell me the name. And she said, I'm going to play this to you and you got to come up with a name for the piece. Uh, yeah. And basically, I called it the Moonlit Stroll of Whiskers the Cat. <laughs> and so basically, sort of that kind of feeling that this it's midnight and the moon's out and this cat's walking along and he'll cause mischief and he'll like get chased where um, the fast bits were. Oh, that. da, 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 da. That's like a chunk. That and he'll be like, and then right at the end, he goes back to sleep. So just everything you get to do in that sort of, um, you know, <laughs> that sort of, yeah, that's what I called it. That is such a cool, cool story. I, I really like that because it's almost like here, uh, 
It's like two cats kind of running around. You can picture it brilliantly. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> Finn, that is that is your imagination um, using your imagination brilliantly. I love it. Um, so I wondered. You said that you've pl played around with things being a bit louder, softer, that sort of thing. Have you tried any reinterpret re reinterpreting the music, trying some of your own melodic ideas? Uh, not really. No. Should we give it a go? Not with this one. We do it with other ones, but no, not with this one. Okay, because there's a few things I think we can do. Actually, let me, before that, let me pull out something you may not have noticed, um, and that is right at the start, the right hand is somehow out of sync with the left hand rhythmically, because the left hand is like this. So the right hand's got a four note kind of pattern and the left hand, which is like in multiples of two and four, the left hand's in what time signature? What time signature is the piece? Three, four. Three, four. So it would might kind of be make more sense if the right hand pattern went. <laughs> right? <laughs> Me, that part did give me a little bit of trouble right at the start because it, it just sort of messed with me and it took a while to get used to. So right. yeah, that's it. Yeah. So there's uh, there's a word that's sometimes used with these kind of cross rhythms. It's it's quite common in six eight. Have you ever played a piece in six eight before? Yeah, I've would have played many. Yeah. So six eights is kind of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. But you can also divide sixes into twos, right? One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. And there's that great song from West Side Story that's all, I, don't, I want to be in America. Yeah, da, 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 da. One, two, one, two, one, two. So these kind of playing around with rhythms like this, super fun to explore. Um, and I just thought I'd pick it up because that could be something that you might want to do in your own composing. Uh, so we can even try try it and explore that. There's one other place in the piece where that happens. Where is that? The same uh, kind of awkward rhythmic idea. I'm going to hazard a guess, but it doesn't look like it. But that, oh, that part where you go, no, hang on. Let me just, let me just search it. I've got two guesses, either up here where it's, but that's sort of, the same tone as so that was bar 19 okay yeah, yeah. what's what was your uh, other thought or right at the end when it was there it goes. it's yeah it's that passage but earlier in the piece have a look at bar 37 the right hand's doing a four beat sequence going like this Right? Yep. So the right, like at the start, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, which is again out of time with the the three, four waltz feel of the piece. So yeah. That, four as well, right in. Say that again. That sort of copied over the first part of it. It's almost identical without the, um, the switch up, but it goes bar 53, <coughs> four, and then 54. Yes. You've got to... Yes. Okay. Does those two first two, da, 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 whatever it is. Da, yeah. 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 Well, well picked up. So that's a really interesting compositional device. And if you're aware of it, Finn, you'll notice this in other pieces of music too. And you'll probably notice it because it's kind of hard to play <laughs> at first because your, your head's like, oh, what? This doesn't sync quite right. Chopin is famous for it, does this kind of thing all the time in his music. Um, so maybe that's something we can we can have a, an explore with. But firstly, I thought there's a couple of things we can do to have a bit of fun with this piece. And that is uh, this idea. Why don't we play around with this, but play it in a different place on the piano? Right. So uh, we're on starting on B, it's it's kind of like an A minor chord, right? They're using the second note of A minor, 
two, three, five, four, two, three, five, four. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, two, three, six, five, two, three, six, five. So I'm thinking if we're working in A minor, we could probably do something similar if we work in what relative key? What's the most closely related key to A minor? Uh, F. No, so what shares the same, what did you say? C. C, yeah, because they share the same key signature, right? So, so could we do two, three, six, five in C? Could you try it? That's it, yeah. So exactly the same pattern, yeah? And what if we, in the left hand, do something similar? What's the movement of the left hand in the original? What would you, how would you describe it? It is going chromatic, chromatically down. Very good, chromatic descent. Oh, such a great student. So what if we did a chromatic descent starting on C with that right hand pattern this time? Oh, no idea how this is gonna sound, let's explore. Right. Um, do you want me to play here or here? Your choice. Right. I'm going to go with up just because that's why I did it. Okay. Right. Oh, I'm playing it wrong. It's my bad. No, that's right. That wasn't it? Two, two, three, two, three, six, five. Oh, it sounded good though. What were you doing? I was just doing it one, two, five, so I was playing on C, not on D. This? Yeah. Oh, I like yeah. it. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. I was doing... Right hand. It doesn't really work because that's supposed to be at C. Yeah, so C would be a better finish note, but that's kind of cool, isn't it? Song, you know? Yeah, it does. It, I mean, it's, it, it may not work, but this is the kind of fun thing that I like doing just to explore this as, a, as an idea. Um, what if... I suggest if we put a minor in there, it might make it sound more like the original kind of spooky thing. Oh yeah, do you want to do try it out? What, what note are you that? thinking of changing? Um, so just C minor, probably just put it in the back instead. Or that. Yeah, you probably want to use the A flat though. Pardon? Try the A flat. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that works. Wait, I'll find this wrong here. Bravo, that sounds really nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but I mean, the reason why it sounds nice is because what have we effectively done now to the original? Um, basically, change the um, chord that's in. Yeah. Yeah. But we've changed right hand and left hand. We've just moved to a new key. What's that called if you move an entire piece to a new key, but don't change anything else? <laughs> I don't really know. It's called transposing. So what you've effectively done is transpose this piece of music from A minor to C minor, which is a great skill as well. But the reason it sounds good to us now is because it's the same as the original. Effectively, just in a different key. Um, so now it was interesting the first time you played that and you were like, oh, that rhythm's not right. That was because yeah. you were playing it in time, both hands. Yeah, I was. I played, yeah, I played the next note on every fourth beat. Yeah. Every fourth beat. But yeah, it wasn't as interesting to listen to, was it? No. No, all right. No. Why don't we play around with this idea of this out of sync thing, right? In, in a different, let's make up our own pattern in the right hand and let's go to a new key area. So, I don't know, you pick a, pick a key that you like, major key. Um, F, F major. F, something about F today. 
So let's, let's work out a little bit of a pattern in the right hand that we can repeat and we'll try and do a bit of an out of sync thing. So we're going to completely change now what's on the page. So uh, what, 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 what can we do note wise in F? Do you want to explore just a few, yeah. just play around a few ideas? So F major, we have... I think we want to end it on F like they've done it. So I don't think we should start on F. Okay. And, and we should probably use the flat. So maybe something like. Ooh. You could use the G, G's better. I like it. It's really nice. Yeah. So, really nice, really nice. Okay, so what are we going to put? What we've actually, <laughs> we've actually, yeah, <laughs> we're not in F anymore. We're in G minor, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, okay. You try it. What do you think? Uh, Just playing an F major chord in my left hand with it. Oh, you're right. That would work. All right. Um, come up an octave, Finn. How do I do it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's 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 muck around with that left hand because. We've actually kind of, we're more in a G minor pattern now, I think. So why don't you try a G minor chord in that left hand with it and see what you think. That was good, that was good. Yes. Oh, so we've got a few options here. So yep. if we if we use incantation as a model, yes. if the right hand stays the same, we could move the left hand chord to some different positions. So let's have a think about what other chords we could use in the left hand. We've got G minor. What are some of the other chords we could use? Um, uh, F. F, yes, F. definitely. E major. Now that is going to be quite quirky, but let's try it anyway. Uh, in fact, I'm actually, now that I think about it, I know that one's not going to work. And do you know why? Did you say it's not going to work? E major is going to be a real clash with this. Have a think about, do you know the scale of G minor? Mm -hmm. yep. Can you play just G minor? I think you forgot. Sorry, so what? Major. That's okay. What do we know about the E in the scale of G minor? Oh, it's flat. Yeah. So what's the chord? Maybe rather than E, what could we try? We could go. We could do an E flat. Try it. Play it. E flat major. E flat major. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a minor chord to me. What notes are you playing? Give me a sec. That's the one. All right, so we've got, you've just picked three chords. Can you remember them? Yep. Already sounds a bit like any kind of, sounds a bit like a pop song, doesn't it? <laughs> we could have fun with that. All right, let's, let's try those three chords with your right hand, your beautiful right hand melody. I love it. All right. Is that it? Yeah, it's it. Lovely. Yeah. 
Courtney, you try coming, go down the chords and come back up again. Go down the chords and come back up. Yeah, back up via F. And if you wanted to, Finn, you could go uh, a bit slower. Uh, sorry, stay stay for two repetitions. That's okay. That's okay, keep going, keep going. That is yeah. that is the start of something super super cool. Now, uh, to to expand on that idea, you could obviously go up an octave, but you could also you could also potentially you could potentially change it up. I like I like things with octaves. Sound really kind of cool, yeah. Whoops. Method. It's sort of like um, if you get the scale and then you can sort of jump it up a bit. Oh, oh, I mean, there is heaps of potential here. We, we're using just three chords, G minor, simple ideas, but you've got lots of potential here. Uh, one thing, because I know we've got to wrap things up in a second. Um, I'd love to, love to yeah, hear, hear you explore this idea more and turn it into something, because it could be quite epic. Yeah. I mean, this is the basis of film, like film composition, of very simple chord structures and just lots of movement, right? Um, one little theory reminder here. At the moment, we're using an F natural, not an F sharp, because G minor has an F sharp in it, right? G harmonic minor scale, would you agree? So we're using a scale that doesn't have an F sharp in it. Could you play that, just one octave, G minor, with no raised seventh? Is that a, is that a, yeah, that's it. Is that a scale type that you've explored before? Um, isn't it G, um, what is it called? And then don't you raise it on the way down? No, I am. You're, you're, think, you're thinking, yeah, it is G natural minor. Yeah, and it's the form of the scale that you play. If you're playing a melodic minor scale, mm -hmm. That's the thing you were thinking of. The descending form of that's the natural minor. Natural minors tend to, like you could, if I, if I played this, I'm just gonna play a G minor chord and a descending line in my left hand. But going with a sharp. just doesn't sound the same. So oftentimes natural minor scales are more fun and better to explore when you're doing improvisationary work like we've done today. And just don't put the um, sharp in there when we do it. Not at the start, but later on you might be able to do it. Maybe if you do something melodic, you might want to add it in. Yeah. Wow, that was so much fun. Did you enjoy that? Yeah. Yeah, that was great fun. All right, I want to leave you with a bit of a challenge and that's to see if um, you can put something together that could be, you know, have a little bit of a structure and a bit of an intro and then a middle section and then a finish um, based on that chord progression. And then if you wanted to video record it, you could send it to me or I could share it or we could have another session. Yeah, sure, easy. Brilliant. 
Fantastic. Yeah. All right, we better wrap it up. I think you've got to go back to class. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time again. Absolute pleasure, Finns. Always fun working with you. Thank you.